All right, we just got back from uh, Utah. Did about 3,000 miles out there. I posted some pictures on Facebook and I got a lot of questions about the, the back end of the truck. So I thought I'd make a little video, talk about some of the things there. Cause I had some questions about, uh, there's a sink back there and a couple of totes that people were asking me about. Uh, the first thing I usually do is, uh, is level the truck so that I can sleep in the tent level. Um, you can see up there, uh, Rome rooftop tent. Uh, on the left side is the ARB awning, and in this uh, in this bag here is the the quick pitch end suite. So um, I'm just a lot of guys drive up on rocks or uh, use the traction boards or whatever. Um, I have 7,500 pound airbags on individual switches, so I just use those to control which side of the truck needs to come up or down, or if the whole back needs to come up or down. I keep a level right here in this pouch. I usually, I'll just drop it on the tailgate there and I can see that, I mean, you can probably see here, the driver's side is kind of low. So the driver's side needs to come up, passenger side needs to come down. And then uh, usually just put it on the bed side here. <clears throat> and uh, we're pretty level there, but it could probably come up all together. So if you follow me up to the front, I'll show you those switches. This is a, a York. 210 belt driven air compressor with a two and a half gallon tank that controls this thing and a high auto switch that uh, allows it to fill up and down a little bit faster. So here we have the drivers up and down and the passenger up and down. So right now the passenger needs to come down and the driver driver's side needs to come up. Um, if you walk around out back, you could probably see the truck move a little bit while I do that. Sure, that's probably close enough. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, being level helps me operate the swing out as well. That way, there's not a, a kind of a side load on it. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you here is probably the quick pitch, because uh, with the tailgate closed or the swing out closed, that quick pitch can go about 270 degrees. So uh, we use that. Obviously, we use that to shower, but I really bought that so my wife could go to the bathroom on the trail without having to walk off into the woods and find a tree or something. So I wanted it to be quick and easy and I wanted to be able to move it uh, as most of the way around the truck as I can to keep it out of the wind. So there's just a little lever here. This is for a, like a gate. I got that at Lowe's and then this thing just swings out. So here um, we could open it, could drop it here. Uh, when we have the tent out, it goes here. But uh, on our last night, in Utah, I had to take a shit on the side of a mountain and I ended up just swinging it over uh, pretty close to the truck here and dropping it right there. And if you look down here, there's just a, it's just a piece of pipe welded to the swing out with a bigger piece of pipe dropped over that. And uh, it just rotates around on that. I'll, I'll drop this uh, once we get the rest of this open. That's uh, let's put it away. Like that. Um, this here is the shower tote, so it's pretty close to the uh, the quick pitch. This is just a Pelican case. It's the Pelican case that my Ready Welder 2 came in, which is pretty big for a welder. So I'll put it in a smaller case, and I use this case to build uh, the water heater. You can see here, um, it's got a little shower head. It's got a water pump, propane tank, and its own battery. Uh, the shower head just, I've got just a, a gear tie on it that'll go into that quick pitch and uh, allow us to take a shower there. <clears throat> I actually don't need this water pump or the battery because the truck has a water pump on it as well with a 35 gallon water tank. So this, this pump and this battery is just to take this down to a, uh, to a static water source and use it down there. So the whole, the whole thing comes off. There's a pin up here, there's a lock. Just a hitch pin from Tractor Supply and a, and a shitty like luggage lock. So this pin will come out. And if you come around to the side, 
you can see me take this thing off. <clears throat> you look down here, it's just a piece of angle iron and uh, some I-beam. So it comes down and the whole thing slides out. And I can take that, I can take that down uh, to the river or the stream along with this little shower tent. And this is just like a, a pop-up shower tent. But that whole thing, just carry that and the shower tent down to the stream. Take a long ass, hot ass shower uh, wherever I want, really. But when I'm using it on the truck, which is most of the time, then obviously it just stays right there. Put that back on. Put that piece of angle iron just drops down into that I beam. It's really get it up into position. We just drop it in back here. Uh, this lock is just because uh, I don't think anybody's going to steal it because it's a, a shower. I think somebody's going to steal it because it's just a pelican case and they don't know what's in it. <clears throat> uh, behind that is uh, is just our little portable toilet. So that comes out. That can either go in the quick pitch or it can go in the annex. It depends on uh, where I want to poop at the time. Uh, the swing out opens on a, a latch here. So this, uh, with all the weight on here, starting to sag a little bit, but uh, comes off of there. I just got a bungee cord on here to keep it from going too far and hitting my tail light. But that's why it's critical that I get the truck level. And the tailgate comes down, and the bungee cord will just pull it back into the tailgate, and it makes it pretty solid. Uh, here is just a folding table that we use. For, you know cooking and putting stuff on this sink is what a lot of people were asking me about this was when we bought our house this thing was in the shop I think it's an RV sink or something but all I did was take the nader pin from the tailgate at the junkyard um, for like a dollar and bolt it onto this thing and it just clips into the tailgate as if the tailgate were closing so it's got just a little dump on it uh, just clips in there, and the other side rests on the, uh, where the swing out latches to. That's it. I usually just dig a hole uh, wherever that drain is pointing, let the water drain into there. Um, if you look in here, I just I've been leaving it connected to that that Y in there, that splitter, little garden hose fitting. Um, here is the. There's a switch for the water pump. I don't know if you can see that. There's a switch for the water pump right there. That also turns on uh, a three-stage filter. It has a half micron, uh, has a one micron sediment filter, and then a half micron charcoal filter, and then a 14 watt UV lamp to turn literally any water that's not salt water into uh, clean, safe drinking water. Um, that is under the truck here. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Where the spare tire was is a 35 gallon RV water tank. And then uh, right in here is the three stage filter. Um, this little green LED light, if you guys can see that. I don't know, you able to get that? That green light is, is uh, after the filament for the UV lamp. So if that green light is on, that means that the, uh, the filament in the UV lamp is activated for sure. So it's just a, it's a, not a safety measure, but it's an indication that the UV lamp is actually working because that light is after the filament. <clears throat> uh, the other switch in here, this red switch, if you could see that, it's a, a 600 watt heating element for that water tank. Um, it's on a, well, it's on this switch so that I could heat the water up if I wanted to, but uh, it's, it's also on a, 35 degree, uh, 45 degree temperature switch. So if it gets too cold uh, at 35 degrees, it'll kick on that 600 watt heating element. Um, when the water gets to 45 degrees, it'll cut it off and it's just to keep that system in there from, from uh, freezing and causing damage. Everything, the rest of that stuff is all PEX, which is kind of, uh, it's a little more resilient to freezing. So I'm not worried about the rest of that stuff. <clears throat> um, let me see. This hose 
is what I use for the shower when we're using the quick pitch at camp if I'm going to be using the, the water tank. So I usually just run this over to here with this thing open. Uh, just got some quick garden hose connections from a uh, tractor supply. That way it's, it's that quick to hook that hose up. It's got a little quarter turn valve on it, so I won't have to mess with that. <clears throat> and then this is a this is a fat Ivan to keep this hinge from closing if it's windy or if I'm a little more on level. Uh, from here, when the old lady wants to take a shower, uh, that quick pitch just swings out. Again, the the tent unfolds to the passenger side, so the annex is usually right here. So the quick pitch comes out um, about this far, and it just unzips. There's two little Velcro straps here. That thing will fall down. Just unfolds. And the old lady can take a shower. This is obviously not removable, which is why if we're taking this water tote down to uh, the stream or whatever, then I have that other shower thing to pop up. <clears throat> uh, if you come around this way, I had a couple guys ask about these totes. I get these for like 30 bucks at the Army Surplus store. It's a hard dig case. They come in like a million different shapes and sizes. I mean, I have some probably four foot by four foot by four foot cubes with cutouts underneath for using a forklift and stuff. And I have some really small ones that I used to use as a trash can before I got that trasheroo. But uh, they're pretty durable. They got some handles on the side to lift. The back is hinged. A couple clasps up front, and it'll open up. There's a there's a weatherproof seal here all the way around and I just keep all the random stuff in there, pots and pans, the grill is in there, the Mr. Buddy heater, another table, stuff like that, nothing nothing crazy. Um, the other one up there is full of spare parts. So that one doesn't come out much and it weighs like a million pounds. It's got unit bearings and locking hubs, alternators, power steering pump, heim joints, uh, tie rod ends, there's air hose fittings, radiator hose, uh, extra lug nuts, and um, just any obviously anything that would go wrong on the trail is in that thing. And anytime I'm wheeling, I take that tote with me. The rest of this stuff I don't usually carry. We usually try to camp where it's cool, but we had to camp our way out of Texas to get to Utah, which is why there's an AC unit and a generator back there. That generator runs on propane, which is why I have two propane tanks. And then uh, this little bracket um, I just welded my old lady wanted to be able to put that AC unit in the window of the tent so I just built a bracket out of some angle iron to drop down on that rack AC unit sits sits in that a couple chairs in there and a, a dog bed thing high lift jack is mounted to the other side and then uh, there's an outlet I don't know if you were able to see that outlet when we were looking at the at the uh, switches in here. This outlet is how I run that Keurig that some guys were talking shit about. Uh, pretty convenient just to plug it in and make a cup of coffee in the morning without messing around with a bunch of uh, a bunch of other stuff. There's a 3000 watt inverter under the seat that runs that thing. So it also runs my wife, whatever, straightener, curling iron, hair dryer, whatever, like three in one thing. Um, that runs off of a 130 amp uh, amp hour lithium battery that's up under there with the water tank um, it's and it's powered by a 150 watt solar panel and it's on a battery isolator for the truck too so when the truck is running it'll charge that thing up which works pretty well other than that I think that's it for the back of the truck this is how we camp pretty quick 
I usually wrap that hose up and shove it in the uh, trash room, but I didn't bother last time we took a shower. I just piled it up and put the sink on top of it. That trash room, I usually have two trash bags in there, one for one for trash and one for laundry. So we were, we did about we did 10 days in Utah and uh, we didn't do any laundry. So I had 10 days worth of clothes in there for the two of us plus uh, trash. Um, and the trash we were able to empty every couple days coming across a dumpster or something, but worked out pretty well.